Section 3-3, Measures of Variation. The main idea here is to describe measures of spread or variation. We will discuss computation, but ultimately we will rely on technology to get the values needed. More importantly, we want a solid understanding of the standard deviation so we can interpret it properly. Let's take a look at the basics. One measure of variation is the range. The range is simply the distance between the smallest and largest values in the data set. Much like the mid-range, this is sensitive to extreme values and it's not very useful. The round-off rule for variation is the same as the measure of center, which is one decimal place past the original data set. Be careful though when computing values we want to round off the final answer. Do not round off the intermediate results in your calculation because it may make your final answer less precise. The best way to define the standard deviation is that it is a measurement of how much the data deviates from the mean. We can also simply say that it is a measure of spread. The formula gives some insight to the definition. Working from the inside out, we begin with the idea that we need to find the mean x bar. We find the distance between each value and the mean, that's x minus x bar. We square each of these distances and we add them all up. We divide by n minus 1 to get something that might look like the average. And finally, since we squared each of the distances, we take the square root in the end. I know this seems complicated, but in fact, it is a pretty tedious computation. But thinking about the process gives some interesting insight in the definition. In the older days, before much technology, it turned out that it was easier to find the sum of the values and the sum of the square values, especially for larger data sets. And so we come up with this shortcut where we use sigma x and sigma x squared. Once again, we won't spend too much time on using these formulas to find the standard deviation. Please make sure you're able to use the calculators. Let's examine some important properties of the standard deviation. First, we note that this takes into account all of the values. A change in any value in the data set will change the standard deviation. Next, because we are looking at the distances from the mean, we would never get a negative value for the standard deviation. This is also mathematically confirmed when we take the square root. As stated in the formula, there is a very special situation where the standard deviation might be zero. This is when every data set is equal. If all your numbers are the same, then the mean will be the same and the differences will be zero. So this is the only time the standard deviation is not positive. Just like the mean, the outliers drastically change the standard deviation and the units are the same as the original data. If the data collected was in inches, then the standard deviation will also be in inches. Let's take a look at an example with a very small data set. Let's find the standard deviation using the first formula. The mean is 23.5. We take each x and subtract the mean then square, then add them all up. With four elements, we divide by three and then take the square root. Since the original data set were all whole numbers, we would round off our final answer to 1.9. The standard deviation can be applied to find the majority of the data set. Using the range rule of thumb, we can assume that about 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. So if we know the mean and standard deviation of a set, we can find the 
usual values by starting with the mean and adding and subtracting twice the standard deviation. The minimum value would be on the left, the mean minus two times the standard deviation, and the maximum value will be on the right. It would be the mean plus two times the standard deviation. For example, suppose we have 40 cookies and counted the chocolate chips in each cookie. We found the mean to be 24 and the standard deviation to be 2.6. Using the formulas, we would get the range of usual values to be between 18.8 and 29.2. If we took out a cookie with 30 chocolate chips, would this be unusual? Well, the range is between 18.8 and 29.2, so it looks like it is slightly above the maximum value of 29.2, so this would seem unusual. If we don't know the standard deviation, we can estimate it. We can imagine the data being split into four major parts. The range gives us the overall distance from smallest to largest value in our data set, then divide it by 4. One more comment about the sample standard deviation. Sometimes we need to compare standard deviations from two different samples. This is appropriate if the sample means are close to being the same. However, for different sample means, it would be more meaningful to compute and compare the coefficient of variation. We'll discuss this later in this section. Surprisingly, the population standard deviation has a glaring difference from the sample standard deviation. There is a clear difference in notation, like the s versus sigma, x bar versus mu, and lowercase n versus capital N. But the most glaring difference is the denominator. What we used to have, <coughs> what used to be n minus 1 is now n. The variance is simply the standard deviation squared. The notation is simply s squared or sigma squared. Just imagine the standard deviation formula without the square root. Here's a summary of notation for the measures of variances. Just a quick preview of inferential statistics, we will be interested in estimating population parameters. And so, it turns out that the sample variance is a good estimator for the population variance. Let's dive a little deeper with variation. Recall the difference between sample and population standard deviations. For the sample, instead of dividing by n, we divide by n minus 1. The main reason is that with the mean, there are n minus 1 independent values. I'd like to think of it this way. n minus 1 is less than n, and dividing by a smaller number will give a larger value. When it comes to comparing the sample versus the population standard deviation, it is better to get a closer to the target instead of underestimating it. Another important and very popular result is the empirical rule. This is sometimes called the 68-95-99.7% rule. This states that for a bell-shaped curve, about 68% of the data will fall within one standard deviation of the mean. 95% will fall within two standard deviations of the mean and 99.7% will fall within three standard deviations from the mean. The picture might help illuminate. Finally, we go back to the idea of being able to compare standard deviations with very different means. The coefficient of variation finds the ratio between the standard deviation and the mean.
This is the end of section 3-3.